Hi, and welcome back to Allen High School's AP IB Chemistry course. And we are finishing up our conversation of thermochemistry and thermodynamics by zeroing in on our free energy and different ways we talk about free energy and calculate free energy. And uh, let's jump right in, after which we will do some AP questions. This next one hopefully is a quick one for you. This is simply showing that we can apply Hasse's law to free energy. Delta H is a state function. Entropy is a state function. Delta G is a state function. We can apply Hess's law. So here's our goal reaction, and here's our givens. So we want to manipulate our givens to achieve our goal. I start here. There's my first substance. I've got CH4. I find it in the first reaction. That's the only place it shows up. So I'm going to go ahead and manipulate it. It's a reactant in my goal reaction, so I'm going to have to reverse this reaction in order to have this kind of play out correctly according to Hess's law. Now, since I reverse the reaction, I change the sign. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, the next one is oxygen. Now, oxygen shows up in two places, so I don't want to deal with it. All right, I don't want to kind of start manipulating it in one and when I really should have dealt with the other. So I'm going to ignore it and it will fall into place. So I'm going to go to my CO2. I have CO2 as a product. It's a product here, so that's a good thing. I need one and this has one. So all I have to do is carry this puppy right on down. O2 gas. I'm trying to be a little bit more careful with states. I think I probably shouldn't have been sloppy earlier and minus 394, didn't do anything to the reaction. Didn't multiply it, didn't flip it, nothing. Okay, and two waters, this has wa waters as products here. There are products on this one, and I two here and a two there. Again, all I have to do is carry this down. And now I've manipulated all they've given me to manipulate. And so the key is, is to cross things off and make sure that it comes out to my goal. So I've got two H2 gas and two H2 gas, one solid carbon and one solid carbon, reactant and product can cancel. And when I add these all up, and that's what Hess's law is about, is adding these up, what I'll be able to do if I add reactions, I add the enthalpy values. I just want to do a quick check that I did achieve my goal reaction. Always a good idea. And that took care of, that was two oxygens there, took care of those, took care of that. Um, one CO2, bring that on down. And two H2Os. And now, Hess's law says, since all a state function is concerned about is final and initial. It didn't matter whether I took this whacked out pathway. Uh, I can do that and I do indeed get minus 817 kilojoules for that process. Now that would be for one mole of methane, for two moles of oxygen, for one mole of CO2, and for two moles of H2O. Now, free energy links us to equilibrium. So this is our tie between thermo and equilibrium. Now, I'm telling you, there's not a strong tie between thermo and kinetics. It's there, but it's not this strong, real obvious tie. And so watch out, because I have an AP question where they're trying to trip you up and see if you don't know what you're talking about. So. All right, this is the equation we have. Delta G is equal to delta G naught. This is at standard uh, state. R, gas constant, because we're dealing in energy, we have to use the 8.314. That's joules per mole Kelvin. That's the one we would also use for Pascals. Q, we know is the non-standard or non-equilibrium concentrations. So that's one formula we'll use. The only problems that I've seen students have with these is remembering to put their delta Gs, both of them, the delta G at standard, under standard conditions, and the delta G 
in non-standard in joules as opposed to kilojoules and that's because R is in joules. The only other thing I've seen that is a common way to trip up is to grab the wrong R values. If you have some sort of energy term you have to use 8.314. Okay. Now at equilibrium delta G goes to zero Q becomes K, maybe I could have put an arrow there, and we end up with this second formula here. So we have two formulas that we want to focus on for this. I'm just going to see if I can um, put a little square around them so that you see them a little better. So we've got this formula here that we're going to be using and this formula here, depending on the question and how it is asked. So let's dive in. Uh, using standard thermodynamic data, determine the equilibrium constant. Well, the standard thermodynamic data that I have are delta G naughts of formation. So I can get my delta G naught for this reaction by looking up the formation. And it would be 2 times the delta G naught of formation of NO2 minus 1 times my delta G naught of formation of NO4. So those would be both delta G naughts of formation. Okay, And I looked those up, and so I have 2 times 52 joules per mole minus 1. I'm just emphasizing that 1 there. Obviously, you don't have to write that down mathematically. I just like to show you that I'm including those balancing coefficients. And if you do that algebra, you get 6 kilojoules. So now I want to plug that into this formula. It asks me for K. Calculate the equilibrium constant. Well, first thing I have to do is check my units. This must be in joules. So I have to convert 6 kilojoules to 6,000 joules. That's a minus. I have to use 8.314 because we have energy in this. It's at 298 Kelvin. Unless you're dealing with a delta T, you better use Kelvin temperatures. Embrace Lord Kelvin. And there's our equilibrium constant. So if we rearrange this, I would take E to the minus 6,000 over 8.314 times 298. Right? I divide both sides by this. The opposite operation of natural log is e to the power. So I first divide by the negative 8.314 times 298, and then I take the opposite operation. And when I do this, I get 8.89 times 10 to the minus 2 for k. And k is unitless. We don't, we're not real concerned about units for k. IB, sometimes you'll see it, in which case if it was partial pressures, it would be, I don't know, um, kilopascals, because it's, it's concentration squared over concentration. So I'll let you figure that out. All right, let's take a look at another one, delta G for the reaction. It asks us to calculate it when we have these atmospheres. So this was the same reaction as above. So delta G is delta G naught, which is 6,000, plus RT, 8.314. Notice we have to use that R in the, the joules per mole Kelvin. But we're taking the natural log of a ratio of pressures. It's OK if we keep those in atmospheres and I'd get 0 0.1 squared over 1. And when we do this, I get minus 5.41 times 10 to the third joules for delta G. Remember, this was delta G naught from the previous, whoops, that's a really big naught, delta G naught from my previous problem. Okay, so that's how you would use that second reaction question there. Okay, this is calculating for ammonia. Now, we can balance this equation, but basically it's a 
formation. I want to form one mole of ammonia. Remember a delta G, delta H of formation has to be from one mole from the, uh, their elements in their natural state at standard ambient temperature and pressure. And in order for this to be a one, that means I have to use fractions here. But we really don't even use this. All we have to do is in this case, delta G naught for this reaction is equal to delta G naught of formation of ammonia. That reaction is a formation reaction. And so I looked that up and it's very close to 17, 1, 2, 3 is equal to minus RT 8.314 times 298 times ln of k because we're using the equilibrium one. We are at equilibrium. And when I solve for k, I get 955. Double check my math. I got something a little bit different, but I think it's because I grabbed a slightly different value for the delta G naught of formation. Okay, deep breath, one more, and we're done. All right, so this time they give me, the question gives me the free energy of a process and relates it, tells me that it's four times the size of the standard free energy. So that says that delta G is equal to four times delta G naught. Well, delta G is 10 kilojoules, so four times delta G naught so delta G naught must be 2.5 kilojoules. So that's what that first statement says. Now they want us to solve for Q. So remember, delta G is delta G naught plus RT ln of Q, because I'm not at equilibrium at this point. Uh, so let's pop those in. Remember, we must use joules. So I'm going to convert that to joules. Again, when you're doing WebAssign, before you call me over, I mean, of course, you know I'm going to help you under any circumstances, but before you call me over, you might want to check your units. So that's my setup. If you solve for Q, you should get Q is equal to 20.6. All right, the next part of the units has this two-point Van't Hoff equation. We've seen that once before. I wanted to show it here because the intercept of your Van't Hoff equation, remember I related the equilibrium constant to the enthalpy, but we hadn't discussed entropy yet. So we can do a Van't Hoff plot, and this is important. These are the kinds of graphs you need to be able to label. If we graph natural log of k versus 1 over t, I can get the slope, and that's equal to minus delta h over r, but I can also get my entropy from this. So this would be the type of experiment you could do to determine both your entropy and your enthalpy of a reaction. So just do a series of reactions, measure their k values, and get the trend line. Now, in this case, my slope is negative, and so that negative slope is equal to negative delta H over R, and so delta H, whoops, good thing we're about done, because I'm almost out of battery here. Delta H would be positive. So, all right, it's just AP questions from here in terms of your videos. So until then, this is signing off.